This second video will be a supplement to the first video and contains some very useful information if you would like to work smarter in Revit and use all the data that we already have in the model. The video will show how you can use Revit for all your calculations in Revit and also how you can benefit of using Dynamo to, for example, synchronize information in the model. Like in the first video, I will start by creating a new project based on the DEN EDU system template. I will link in a Revit model, um, a bit more complex Revit model containing some more rooms. First of all, I will take a copy of my floor plan level one. I will duplicate it. I will rename it to zones, spaces and zones. First example will be on how to convert the rooms that we have in our Revit model into zones. So if I start by selecting my link model and say uh, in edit type and I say uh, room bounding, yes to room bounding, then it will be uh, possible for me to copy the room's information into spaces. So now it's possible for me to select, for example, a room. So I move my mouse over and tap until I select a room. As you can see, the room has a number and it has a name. Um, and those information I would like to copy to spaces. So under Analyze, I create a space. I don't want to have tag on my placement, so I place spaces automatically and it will create me 43 spaces. So now when I select a space, you'll see that it has a lot of different information. So I can add specif uh, specified supply airflow. Um, and I can add another, uh, a lot of, of other information to that specific space. It's not a room anymore, now it's a space. So if I create um, a schedule containing all spaces in my project, um, in my schedule I would like to see area. I would like to see level, I would like to see name and number. And that might be, and then specify specified air, uh, specified supply airflow. So first of all, I would like to have level and then next column name, number, area, and specified airflow. As you can see here, it has just named all the spaces with the name space, and the numbers are just randomly added from 1 to 43. Normally I was supposed to change that manually in Revit, um, but let me try to show you what Dynamo can do for us when we want to. Actually, we have the information, but we just need to convert it from the room and into spaces. So I have created a small Dynamo script here um, that I can click Run, and it will make the conversion for us. So what it does is that it finds all spaces of that specific category. Um, it gets the value from the room uh, parameter, and then it's supposed to push that information into the space. That is actually what our Dynamo script are doing for us. So when I click Run, it will take all the information from the room and add it to the space and also the number. 
I have a very small room here that might be a shaft or something and I'll delete that because that shouldn't be a part of it. So now I have a long list of all my spaces. Um, I could select all the spaces uh, in my model and begin to change the value in the specified supply airflow. I can do that in the schedule as well. Another advantage in using uh, the information that we already have in our Revit model might be to, to use uh, zones. Um, in this case, I would like to have three systems in this project. So if I select from left to right, I select all my spaces <coughs> in this area. <coughs> and under Analyze, I uh, press Zones. That will give me um, all the spaces um, connected to this zone. Um, that should, of course, also be a part of my schedule. So I add that to my schedule. So, and that was zone number one, even though it's named number two at the moment, but we'll change that. Um, and I'll then select the other spaces. Um, that should be um, gathered in uh, another zone. And to make it a bit more easy understanding, I can add a color fill legend to this view. So it's quite easy to see the different zones and the different names in this uh, legend. Now let's try to divide the space schedule that I have here. Let's try to divide that up into the different zones that we have. So under sorting and grouping in my schedule, um, I, f I uh, sort this by zone. I add a blank line underneath. Um, and in this case, I have added some specified supply airflow to the, um, to the spaces in zone one. So what we also can do in, in uh, schedules, we can create what we call calculated value. So if I want to have, for example, airflow per second, I can take the specify uh, supply airflow column and multiply it by the area. And we need to be quite precise with the rest of this. Um, and that is because we need to strip the units from the value and make it a unitless number. And that will then give me the airflow per second. So in the same way, I create a new calculated value because now I would like to have the airflow per hour. So that is not rocket science. So airflow per second multiplied by 3600. And that will then give me the airflow per second. So per, per hour. And again, we can then work with the field format if we don't want to have that many decimals. For example, we would like to have only one. We can change that. And we can also calculate a total. So on the formatting, we can select airflow per hour and say we would like to have a calculation of that total value for that specific zone. And that will then make it easy for us to go into a manufacturer's web page where I can find that specific dimension on those air handling units. A final comment from here might be that since we're working with this building information model, it's of course possible to take our volume from 
those zones as you can see <clears throat> when I um, add um, the total volume for this zone um, and if I then select a space and change the limit offset it will change the total volume of that zone 